Hare Krishna. The mind is like a dog that barks but can't bite unless we let it. Suppose we saw a very ferocious dog growling, barking scarily. Yeah. We, would be, we would be unnerved. But suppose at that time someone told us this dog does not have any teeth. You would feel immensely relieved knowing that the danger has substantially gone down, that the dog barks but can't bite. Uh, when we try to do anything purposeful in life and especially when we try to do something, anything spiritually purposeful, the mind often distracts us. It whispers, it speaks, it shouts, it yells, it screams and through all its uh, voices, it's, it's, uh, especially when its voice becomes loud, it seems like a dangerous dog. We want to do one thing and the mind just pushes us into doing other things. So now, when the mind starts distracting and tormenting us repeatedly like this, we may become disheartened, thinking, I just can't deal with this. How can I endure this? How long will I fight this? But the Gita helps us and understand that the mind is a dog that barks but can't bite unless we let it. What does it mean? That the mind cannot force us to do anything. The mind can push us, goad us, but we can counter push. We can resist its goading. So the mind cannot control us and make us do things unless we decide to do it. And of course, unless if, if we are alone with our mind, sooner or later we'll simply hear the mind and do its bidding. So what we need to do is be in someone else's presence internally. And that higher presence is Krishna. When we hear Krishna's voice and do his bidding, then we won't have to do the mind's bidding. Otherwise, when we hear the when we hear the mind, uh, so here can mean give oral reception, and here also mean act on the mind. So when we hear the mind by giving oral reception to what it is saying, and then after by doing what it is saying, then basically we give it the teeth by which it bites us. We don't have to do this. And the Bhagavad Gita says that uh, in 6.5 it says udhare datmanatmanam natmanam avasadayet. It says the mind, we should elevate ourselves with the mind and not degrade ourselves because the mind is the friend of the soul and the mind is the enemy also. So the fact that the Bhagavad Gita tells us we should elevate and not degrade ourselves with the mind, this implies that we have the capacity to choose. And that capacity to choose is enhanced when we practice bhakti steadily. When we connect with Krishna, when we invoke Krishna's presence in our, presence in our heart and absorb ourselves in serving Krishna, then, we define, then the mind stays defanged. And by doing Krishna's bidding, we can avoid doing the mind's bidding and thus we can march forward steadily. And the same Gita says two verses later that Jitatmanaha prachantasya paramatma samahitaha shitoshu sukha dukkeshu tathamana pamanayo Jitatmanaha, one has conquered the mind. Prashant, a person becomes peaceful. Paramatma Samahitaha, a person is actually connected to the super soul. The super soul is invoked in such a person's heart. Shitoshna Sukha Dukkeshu Tathamana Pamanayo, and such a person becomes equipoised towards the dualities of the world. The mind makes us very excited about these dualities, but proximity to the super soul, realization of the security and satisfaction that comes in the remembrance of the super soul that frees us from being shaken by the dualities and thus the mind becomes silenced. So while we are on the path of sadhana bhakti, instead of becoming discouraged by the mind's incessant uh, shouting and screaming, we can actually turn inwards, invoke Krishna's presence and thereby avoid doing the mind's bidding. And thus by recognizing that it is a dog that barks but can't bite, and we don't give it the fangs to bite us by staying absorbed in Krishna's service. Thus we can be peaceful as we are practicing bhakti and eventually when the um, when the mind becomes purified, we will become joyful because the my dog will no longer threaten us at that time, no longer bark and distract us. The mind will become our friend and will assist us in our journey towards Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna.